Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus in this Eucharist, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us be sorry for our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you, and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you 
who are God-fearing. To us, this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize Him, and by condemning Him, they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed, take warning, you rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before Him with trembling rejoice. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. 
Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, the relationship of Jesus with the Father is the highlight of our readings today. In our first reading, Paul preaches to the church in Antioch of Pisidia, the modern-day Turkey. And Paul gave a beautiful summary of the great works of Jesus, especially His passion, His death, and His resurrection. And Paul points out to his listeners how the prophecies of old, how the words of the prophets are all fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the prophecies. All history point to Jesus. And why is this so? Because Jesus is the Son of the Father. In our Gospel today, Jesus assures us of many things. We hear consoling words from Jesus. Jesus tells us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not worry about many things. Just have faith in God and have faith in me. Jesus also tells us that He is going to prepare a place for us in the Father's house. That there will be a room for each one of us in the Father's house. That we have a place in the house of our Father. And Jesus reveals to us that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that there is no other way to the Father except through Him. How could Jesus claim all these? One reason, because He is the Son of the Father. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the reason why the Church, from its very beginning, has always and has constantly invites us to put our faith in Jesus. We could trust Jesus because Jesus is the Son of the Father, and this Father is a Father who loves us, a Father who cares for us, a Father who wants not our condemnation, but our salvation. And if Jesus is the Son of the Father, if Jesus remains connected to the Father, then Jesus will not do other things than what the Father wants Him to do, to love us, to take care of us, and to save us. Dahil si Jesus ay anak ng Diyos, at ang Diyos ay isang Diyos na nagmamahal sa atin, nagkumakalinga sa atin, at nagnanais hindi ng kapahamakan natin, kundi ng ating kaligtasan. Si Jesus, na anak ng Diyos, walang ibang gagawin, 
kundi ang mga bagay na nais ng Diyos na gawin niya para sa atin. Magliligtas si Jesus, magmamahal si Jesus, kakalinga si Jesus, magpapatawad si Jesus dahil siya ay anak ng Ama. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a very good reminder to all of us. Only the one who is connected to the Father can really save, love, and care for us. Only the one who remains faithful to his relationship with the Father can be trusted. Siya lamang na nananatiling tapat sa Ama ang makakagawa ng kabutihan para sa atin. Siya lamang na nananatiling tapat sa kanyang koneksyon sa Ama ang siyang magmamahal, magliligtas, at gagawa ng ating kabutihan. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, do not just trust anyone who tells you, have faith in me. I will save you. Huwag kayong basta maniniwala sa kahit sinong magsasabing, sa akin ka magtiwala. Ako ang magliligtas sa iyo. Ako ang pag-asa mo. Ako ang magbibigay ng mabuti para sa iyo. Do not just trust these persons. Check first. Is his relationship with the Father strong? Does he remain connected to God who is Father? If yes, then we can be assured that this person will not do any harm but will only do what the Father wants to do. But if the answer is no, if the person who promises us to do what is good for us does not remain faithful to his relationship to the Father, then this person will just do us harm and he will also do harm to himself. Ang magliligtas sa atin ang gagawa ng mga dakilang bagay sa atin, ang tunay na magmamahal sa atin, ay siya lamang na nananatiling tapat sa kanyang ugnayan sa Diyos. Kung hindi tapat sa ugnayan ng Diyos, kapahamakan lang ang idudulot niyan sa atin. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all children of the Father like Jesus. And if we remain connected to the Father, if we remain faithful children of the Father, then the world will have less troubles. The world will have less problems. People will, will worry less. And the world will have more peace, more justice, more love. These will be the fruits of our faithful connection, of our faithful relationship to God who is our Father. Let us pray with complete trust in our Father who in Jesus prepared a place for us in heaven. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that the church may lead the faithful in the ways of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that public servants 
may become living and effective instruments in the transformation of our society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are troubled by material and financial concerns may seek refuge in our Lord's providential care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in our bodily and spiritual infirmities, we may all the more depend on God who wants to grant us total and permanent healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may be freed from the troubles of this world and enjoy everlasting peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers. And let us also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father in heaven, grant that we may ever keep our eyes on your house where we hope to dwell with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Tomorrow, the 1st of May, we will celebrate the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And the Catholic bishops of the Philippines declare that tomorrow will be a day of national consecration to St. Joseph in this year declared by Pope Francis as the year of St. Joseph. And so tomorrow in all Masses, we will pray the act of consecration to St. Joseph. Our Masses that will be live streamed tomorrow will be at 7.30 in the morning, our regular Mass here at the Manila Cathedral. At 9.45 in the morning, we will join Archbishop Romulo Valles, the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, as he prays the Act of Consecration. And at 10 o'clock, we will join the Mass at the National Shrine of St. Joseph in Mandawe. The Mass will be presided by the Archbishop of Cebu, Archbishop Jose Palma. And at 6 o'clock in the evening, our Apostolic Administrator in the Archdiocese of Manila, Bishop Broderick Pabilio, will lead the celebration of the Mass and the praying of the Act of Consecration for the Archdiocese of Manila at the parish of San, Jose, San Jose Mangagawa in Tondo, Manila. And so tomorrow we invite you to join us and uh, as we consecrate ourselves and our nation to St. Joseph, the protector of the Holy Family and the patron of the Catholic Church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Leitare, Alleluia, Quia, Portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.